Hi everybody, and hi Andrea, Professor Andrea Schneider, Marquette University Law School. I'm so glad you joined us. Um, My pleasure. And I, and everybody else, uh, would really like to hear uh, your thoughts on this very, very important negotiation concept known as anchoring. Okay, so anchoring, uh, let me explain first what it is, and Best then we'll talk go. about yeah. how to use it. Right. Uh, so, anchoring is the idea that when somebody else throws out a number, so when I'm negotiating with you, uh, and you have either a beginning number or bid or piece of information, that I then get focused on that piece of information, mm -hmm. and that literally anchors us, right? So the visual of this anchor kind of dragging you down uh, mm -hmm. and holding you in a position. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an interesting thing. They've done studies all about anchoring, and the number that you throw out doesn't even have to be a realistic or a rational number. So any number. It just means that if there's a number on the table, we're going to be talking about and around that number. Right. Whatever so it is. Right? Whatever or, it or is. An item. Right. right. Yeah. They, they did this kind of amazing study on what's the average temperature in San Francisco. Okay. And the number they threw out, you know, was it more or less than like 500 degrees Celsius right. or something? Right? Ridiculous. Well, that's like a question on a like, survey. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. and, then the next serve, and then the next question said, so what do you think the average actually is? Right. And if, when people had this ridiculous number, they were anchored really high, even with a crazy number. Um, so we know that the impact of having this piece of information, even when it is not realistic or related or anything else, has a remarkable psychological pull. Okay. Um, and then, of course, when the number is in the ballpark, right. so you're looking at houses and the listing price is right. the classic anchor. Right. right? Well, mm. What is that listing price based on? Right. It means and who I, actually sets right. that? I chose to write a, a, a number. I'm selling my house for $200,000. It doesn't really matter what the house is worth. What is The right. fact that the number $200,000 is out there is anchors. going to affect it anchors. Exactly. So it's this incredible psychological phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And because anchoring is so powerful, we can use it. We also right. need to be able to defend ourselves against it and be right. aware that an anchor may be used against us mm -hmm. and think about how we want to counter that. So we're going to first look at how we can use anchors yeah. uh, given this important psychological phenomenon mm -hmm. and then we'll study how we can defend against it and make sure okay. that it's not used against us. So if we <coughs> want to use an anchor, the easy part is to think about being the first one to throw a number out. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to think about in a negotiation what is that number uh, if we're looking at a lease, if we're looking at salary, if we're looking at, you know, I want to do the dishes on Friday night but not on Saturday night, I want to <coughs> switch shifts with you, really whatever it is, um, the concept of anchoring really pushes us to thinking about making that offer first, mm. about laying, drawing our line in the sand first. So this uh, uh, psychological element actually kind of cast a spotlight onto that, that ages old question of who goes first. You're saying, right. well, if we want if, if you, we want to anchor if we want to first, anchor, yeah. right, right. Then it's important to think about going first. Right. And of course you want to make it an anchor uh, that is not going to have some sort of backlash where people are going to say, oh that's so realistic, I'm not even going to talk about it. Right. Um, because we want the anchor to then serve as the focal point of conversation. Right. Um, and to have that important psychological benefit. Uh, so you need to make your anchor realistic, uh, it needs to be in the ballpark, and make it as uh, optimistic for yourself and as favorable for yourself as possible. Right. Uh, and get that information, that anchor out on the table. Oh, and that, that's important because what I, what, I, what I heard you saying kind of between the lines is your anchor is something that you put out there, it's an offer that you put out there that should really uh, draw things towards your side and towards the outcome that you want and should not be understood as something that you kind of toss out uh, which is something in the middle between what you think they're going to want and you're going to want and is trying to be like a reasonable first offer that maybe you can all say yes to. You're saying something that is firmly going to draw the conversation towards your side. Exactly. If you're going to anchor and that's your strategy, 
be on your side right. of the negotiation. Yeah. Right? And it's one of those interesting things. People talk about, well, I want to be reasonable, I want to yeah. be in the middle, um, and then assume that when they make this beautiful, reasonable offer... That everyone could say yes to, in right. their minds at least. That somebody else is going to say yes, right. and they're done. Right. Okay, that no. doesn't happen. No. People don't just, if they were going to say yes to you, they would have already, and you're not going to be engaged <coughs> in this negotiation. Right. Right. So you need to really think about using your part of the conversation, right. your opening bid, your anchoring, to pull right. that conversation toward your perspective. Mm -hmm. And you should assume that they are likely going to counter and have other arguments, and that over time, of course, you might end up in the midpoint. But if you start in the middle, you're you know, gonna end off on the right. other. You will never get more than what you ask for. Right. Use anchoring right. to bring it to your side. So that's how to use right. anchoring as the sword, right. really, at, when you're on the offense right. in a negotiation. We should also be cognizant, of course, that anchoring can have an impact on us, right. particularly in situations where we are walking in and there's already a list price right. for a house there is the rent rate is set in the apartment right. and we're trying to negotiate right. perhaps a lower rent right. uh, or a different timeline for our rent or, or yeah, whatever, whatever it is. You walk into a, a used car lot and there's, exactly. there's a price on the car, so the price is the anchor and the fact that, and g going with what exactly. you've been saying, the fact that the, the car says, you know, uh, 8,000 and it's been crossed out and you see the 6,000, so it's saying not only is right. 6 the number, but we've already done you a favor and taken down the price, so the anchor is it's six, and we've already made a concession show. Don't ask us for another one. Right, yeah. right, right. And then that is, right, it's eight. They've anchored you at eight anchored where at they eight. started. They've already showed you that they've cut, and you should be completely grateful right. to get it for, you know, 5,700. Right. I mean, wow, that's 300. Out of eight, because it's Woo! out of eight. Right. That's great, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. So recognize, <clears throat> and, and sale prices are perfect. Right? It's, yeah. it's, you know, imagine the most expensive store in your neighborhood, okay. and now the prices are 25% off, and that's right. a huge bargain. Well, no, if it was overpriced to begin with, 25% right. is on its way toward getting what you should spend, which is about 50%. Right? right? It's okay. just, it has nothing to do with what is actually worth it, or fair, right. or objective, right. or any of those but things. But in our mind, we, we do calculate you know, the, the $2,000 off, or we do calculate 25% oh, right. off. Exactly. And that's, wow, anchoring really does that. It really does yeah. that. It brings us into sales yeah. half the time. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm getting such a deal, yeah. right. right? And it looks like they are already being so flexible with you because they've anchored you so well. Right. So the key in order to prevent this from happening is to really know what you're getting. So if you're going into a used car lot, Ignore what the price is. Right, just ignore. Just ignore it. Right. Do your research in advance. Bring your iPad with you while you're there. Right. Go home right. after you've seen it and find out what is a fair price right. for that particular car, given the miles, given the wear and tear, right. what, you know, any other kind of criteria. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for an apartment in a certain neighborhood, okay, well, you know, what are the amenities? What's the neighborhood? What does the landlord provide? How long are the lease? All of these mm -hmm. are the determining factors of what your lease should be and not necessarily what it's been listed at. And I'll add on to that. In, different, in addition to these uh, objective criteria and kind of background data on how the market is and what the... the right. Also, what were your thoughts before coming in here? If I wanted to spend $4,000 as a, a, on a car, then that is an important fact and piece of data to keep in mind, no matter what bunch of numbers they happen to scribble on, on a sign, and even perhaps, some would say, no matter what a fair price is or a legitimate market price is, and so I guess maybe we can kind of self-anchor. Right. Even if our, our own might not be reasonable to the world, or might, but it keeps us away from... Well, and what you've raised is the importance of potentially using a counter-anchor. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you think that they have anchored particularly high, uh, one of the strategies, and again, you can prepare this in advance, yeah. is to think about your counter anchor. Right. So if it's completely unrealistic, right? It's a it's a two hundred thousand dollar house, which is listed at three hundred thousand. Right. right. You could walk in and offer a hundred thousand. Right. My guess is that conversation will end. Right. <laughs> that right. there will yeah. be no room. On the other hand, if it's a, a salary in which you know they're starting at uh, only paying you ten dollars an hour you think you should likely end up at around 13, I'd say, well, start at 15 or 16. 
Mm -hmm. Right? And then you can figure out that that midpoint is likely mm -hmm. where you're going to end up. Right. So part of the strategy for anchoring, again, is to really think about what is that counter anchor. And if you have a midpoint or kind of where you think the negotiation should end up, Kind jump, of, jump over it. Jump and, over and it sit and down go counter. exactly, uh -huh. almost in an equal distance. Because by and large, people tend to go to the middle, and so that right. anchoring and counter anchoring you can use in your brain to set the range of where. So just to, just going. to show what that looked like. So we're, okay. we're in a job interview. Do you right. are you offering me a job or am I inter uh, offering um, you a job? Oh, I'll I'll try to hire you at oh, ten okay. bucks an hour. Ten bucks an hour. Ten bucks an hour. Uh, look, I'm. Thank you. But I mean, I think you'd be really good at this. And, you know, as a starting place, I think 10 bucks would be That's terrific. Great. And I also think that I would be great. And it would be great to work here. Um, 10 bucks an hour, that, that's an interesting offer. I mean, walking in here, um, I, I was pretty darn set on earning 16 bucks an hour. Wow, that's that's a little higher. Um, tell me what that number is based on. Well, it's based on this and on that and on the other thing. Uh, and if you look around, <laughs> that, that's what we see. But uh -huh. but I, I think sixteen dollars an hour is, is a fair price. I mean, do you want to talk around that? Um, well, I think we could probably move. I could move a little bit up. I suppose I could think about you know twelve dollars an hour. Well, well, thanks, and and I'm glad that I'm glad that that we can that we can really talk about this, and and I'm also willing to move, and that you know, no problem, and I understand, and this is just starting off, and I'm sure we could also talk about some sort of a, mm -hmm. uh, some sort of a schedule. We don't have to necessarily talk about it now, although I would like to. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, how about fourteen? Fourteen dollars an hour seems like a fair price. It seems somewhere in between what you had had in mind, something, what I had had in mind. Cut. I'm going to cut you off because, because I don't want this to turn into some of the things. We see who's going to win here in the bargaining game. But I think that even without trying to demonstrate, because this was just riffing, it really right. was just riffing. <laughs> right, um, totally. Just, um, <laughs> um, we, the anchors disappeared. The, right. the counter anchor did somehow make the anchor disappear. Right. It's a great, uh, um, what, a, what a great notion. Right. So it's really, and, and ideally, right, if you, you knew in advance that we were actually going to have a salary negotiation, right, right you would be able to tell me why right. 16, 15, 14, 13 all were fair numbers and here's what they, you know, here's why you were worth mm -hmm. that much money. Um, and so you'd have thought about that and, uh, and right. kind of be prepared to have that counter. And it strikes me that uh, um, I would have made perhaps two or three counter offers that were somewhere in the $15, $16 range, uh, just enough time, it's really buying mm -hmm. time, right. to let the effect of your $10 anchor mm -hmm. kind of dissipate. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and, you know, and then, you know, whatever we'll look for in the, in the $12, $13, $14 range, we'll find right. it. But, mm -hmm. but somehow the anchor, so counter, okay, counter so anchor, counter. yeah. Okay. It can be very, very helpful as well. Okay. And the thing is that not only are you demonstrating to me that you're not letting that $10 anchor you in any way, you've already changed your own mind. Right. And when we talk about success in negotiation, right, we want to make sure that at the very least we're not selling ourselves short. Right. That we have gotten rid right. of the anchor in our own mind, that we are clear about our own goals, and that we understand that negotiation is a give and take, okay. a back and forth, and we're getting more comfortable with that back and forth. So the, the anchor has to dissipate in our own mind mm -hmm. first, and then we can help the other lose it if, if we can. Um, and then we're good to go, kind of. Okay. Well, thank you. I think we are good to go, <laughs> and, I, and I think we're all a lot more ready to, to, to go and take this out into the world and, uh, and see what we can do with it. Thanks so much, Andrea. Pleasure.